I studied how to be a chicken. I studied how to be a passing shadow. I studied how to be the heat of a single candle lit in the corner of a dark room. Acting school can be really strange sometimes, <laughs> especially if it's an acting school in France, like the one I went to. Tu as un poulet, tu comprends? Un poulet, you have chicken in India? Pa, 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 pa. Poulet, you have poulet or no? Yes, yes, I have poulet. Pa, 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 I mean, I, I belted out the largest rooster crow that I could find and muster up inside me. I wanted to scare my classmates out of their chicken skins. <laughs> I was 26 years old when I went to that acting school. And this was the first time I was in an environment that was asking me to be different. They were really pushing me to be so different from everything that I had been or I knew I was. They asked me to look at the world, to watch and observe the attributes and the qualities of nature and of human nature and steal it, grab it, suck it in. Everything you see, you suck it in. And a word that I prefer and is a beautiful word is to embody, embody what you see onto yourself. So as an actor, you are like a camera and a projector. You capture what you see, you file it away in many hard drives in your system, and then you project it onto yourself, a character, a story, a scene. And so, if I was asked by my teachers to embody air, my limbs would start to float, my eyes would soften, my gestures would carry a sensitivity that would be so different if they asked me to embody earth or granite. Earth would make me feel very firm, stable. Granite would make me feel hard, perhaps even a little bit stubborn. And then they would ask me to shift and change from earth to water to air and back to earth. The idea of transformation and change. Sometimes they'd ask me to wear somebody else's legs, somebody else's hunch, somebody's poor sight, and even somebody's solitude. Did the doorbell ring? No. Embody. And it's fascinating because this ability of ours, this human ability to embody, is not just for actors and performers like me. It exists for everyone. It's a wonder human feature that we have. In fact, from the time we are kids, we learn to embody very fast. Right? We're crawling on four legs, and then we see these grown up, hmm, that's kind of nice, two-legged walking, two hands for eating ice cream. I think I'd like to do some of that. And then here we go, we start to walk, and as we become grown-ups, and we see these birds flying, and we're like, I'd like to do a bit of that. Let's make some wings, let's make a plane, let's fly. And then we say, you know what, more than that, I'm interested in what Pluto and Mars and all of these guys are doing in the larger universe. I need to build something so I can get out there. And that is our wonder human feature. And the beauty is we don't just embody the physical world and things that we physically see. We also embody what we cannot see, but that which the heart can feel. And so, yes, we can embody someone else's pain and someone else's joy and someone else's confusion, someone's pragmatism. And it's perhaps this wonderful feature that keeps us so much safer, perhaps even saner, in an otherwise a time and a place and a world where people would prefer for us to be divided, think we are superior to the person across, but this is what makes us feel the other person across the boundaries, across the barriers of our homes, our communities, our religions, what we know and what we think is safe and right and we agree with. 
It's what makes us feel the other person. And no, perhaps there is room for a lot of us, many kinds of us, because we can embody certain spirits of each other, even if we cannot see them. And I think that's what keeps us, perhaps, still alive and kicking. If we can embody the river, perhaps we can travel to long distances and have adventures. If we can embody the sunshine, perhaps we can spread some of it ourselves. And if we can embody who we do not know, perhaps we can be a little bit more considerate. I was at a storytelling workshop, and this was about a few months ago in Bangalore. It was a storytelling workshop for 50 women, women leaders from around the world in one room. They didn't know each other, complete strangers, but we were asked to share stories from our personal lives, stories of risk, pivotal moments that would determine the kind of value systems that we embody. What made us the kind of leaders that we would like to be? What kind of environments do we want to create around us? And the last story of these 50 stories was this woman I will never forget. She was 50, she had short white hair, beautiful white dress, and she got up on stage and she didn't have a story to share because she sang a song. She just got up here and she sang a song. <laughs> and it was a song from her childhood. I think it was from Cinderella. <laughs> And she sang the song, and the audience by then, we had shared so much together, strangers, but shared so many stories, we knew each other, were cheering and applauding her. And after she finished singing and the, you know, the applause died down, she said, I wish I could sing at work sometimes. You're talking about a high-powered leader. She's saying, I wish I could sing sometimes at work, because if I sang, I'd be a little bit more like myself. And if I can be more of myself, what an environment I think I could create for other people to be themselves. And, and that was great. And for that moment, no actor, even like me, standing on the sides watching her, can even embody a bit of what she was talking about because it was her moment. Her moment to find, to feel, to believe, and to look forward to and to share with us. And like that, I would hope perhaps every now and then, for you and myself, in our bodies, in our muscles, in our bones, this magnificent tree of nerves and blood, this throbbing life that we have, I hope that we can embody, and we get the chance to experiment and try to embody so much that the world has to offer and so much that we'd like to be. Thank you.